We are. Oh, now you hit the button. Well, you got to wait till I'm sitting down at least. You don't want like a 20 second me grunting and moaning <laughs> trying to get in position. Get in the position. What's up, everybody? <laughs> here we are. Garrett Chapel, Nathan Ramsey here with you again. <laughs> Welcome to another 910 Outdoor Podcast. Today, we're going to talk outdoors. We don't know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> get ready. He went about to get out of here. Let him get nice and low. Those feathers, bro. Hey, I'm ready, bitch. Oh, they don't get to kill the pack with me. And by golly, you're doing it. Put the smack down, baby. This just got dirty in a hurry. Howdy. Howdy. <sighs> what? I don't know, man. I'm just excited to be here. I feel like this is. I get to see you a lot more here lately. Yep. We can't ever hunt together, so we might, might as well, well hang out up here. <laughs> we might as well hang out in the in the attic together. It's not an attic. Well, yeah, you know what I mean. It used to be an attic, probably. Um, man, this weather. Yeah. Talk about. Uh, it's doing all kinds was of Was it hot things on here. the last podcast we did? Had it already gotten hot? I'm pretty sure it's been hot for like two weeks. Or about a week. week and a half. It's just crazy. We went from everything was frozen, locked up to coldest hunt of my life. Yeah, to wearing shorts and so now we're back sweating. in in t shirts again. Welcome Seventy-five, North Carolina. eighty degrees. Well, it's everywhere though. Mm. Well, I say everywhere, but it's a lot of places. It's not just here. I will. Si- what is that noise? I don't know. I think you got a helicopter over your house or something. It's odd. No, I was uh, sending my wife. Uh, the live video cam from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where they're well, it's there, probably like, not hot there. Skating on ice <laughs> and there's snow everywhere, and I'm like, see, we need to go there. Yeah, we that, need to be there. We need to be there. That's January. <laughs> January, good weather. <laughs> not here. <laughs> Fat white men not like hot. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> fat white man. Speaking of fat white men, I will not be wearing. My uh, vest this <laughs> trip to Oklahoma. <laughs> Not going to work. Nope. Nope. Uh, the the 40 I lost, I, I checked this morning. I'm 38.6 up. Oh, God. That hurts. Mm. Thanks I'm about, Christmas for I'm dinner. about 30 of the 40. It's yeah, it's not, not good. good. It's not good at all. <sighs> Man, that's depressing. <laughs> I told it's you. Bad. This happens every year. I do this every year. I don't know why I'm surprised. Mm. I'm not surprised. But well, at least I'm not alone. No, <laughs> not this time. She's staying here. I tried yeah. to put it on the other day. And I was like, dang it. Like if I, if I wear it with, if I wear it with no shirt on, I can zip it. Y'all going to be like, Nate, see them birds? <laughs> Why don't you sit down? I can't. <laughs> I want to bust a zipper. So, yeah, I got to start back now. Maybe by next season, I can wear that thing again. Yeah, man. Turkey season. We're going to be skinny for turkey season. (laughs) All right. (laughs) But, yeah. No, probably not. (laughs) Probably not. That's when the pecan swirls come out. (laughs) (laughs) I know it felt weird. I went and checked checked one of your um, swamps earlier, which is also in the area where we do a lot of turkey hunting. And it was – I feel like I don't go around that area except for in the springtime. And it was, like, weird driving by looking and – Checking fields, checking for all the fields birds. for turkeys, and did you see any? No, no. They're there though. Oh, they're there. They're there. I've seen a ton I can of turkeys. Feel it? Not up there, but I've seen a ton of turkeys. Well, I call that the turkey highway. <laughs> you go there the right time of year, and it's like boom, boom, boom. Every field you go by, they're just they're everywhere out there, I'm, except for our spots. Aside <laughs> from the whole uh, trip coming up to Oklahoma, which is what two weeks from now, mm-hmm. I'm uh. Well, by the time somebody hears this, it'll be a week from now. But I, uh, I'm ready to kind of switch gears. I remember last podcast you were like, "I'm, I'm pretty much there. I'm, I'm. It's time for turkey season now. <laughs> yeah. I'm there." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went on one duck hunt this year, and it wasn't that great. You so, only went on one. One duck hunt, man. So you want- should start a podcast <laughs> about hunting, right? <laughs> Now we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to go, I guess, go to Old Faithful and kill Woodies. 
yeah. just to just to swing a gun around before the Oklahoma trip comes up. Which good news is I went down there today, and 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 two things I was looking for was there. water and birds. There was water there, and there was some birds there. So maybe um so maybe maybe Saturday we'll morning maybe we'll be in there swatting mosquitoes and January. no, it's going to cool down tonight. It's supposed to come back down a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, at least out of the 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 skeeter. <laughs> Um, margarine or mar- <laughs> margarine, margarine, <laughs> butter, <laughs> margin, margarine, margarine. I don't know. Um, so we might be out of skeetas, but we're not out of snakes, Mister No Legs. He might still be in there. Nah, nah, nope. I check. <laughs> Nowhere to be found, sir. <laughs> Just no good. <laughs> uh, this is we're gonna call this the delirious podcast. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I um, you got a chance to at least kill something. Yeah, but leading up to that, you know, so the the last podcast, I was, it was it was to the point where I think we even called it out of steam because it was just mm-hmm. like, it's not that I want it to be over. I'm just kind of like starting to get burnt out, like just and and it's not even that of that from going too much because rewind. <laughs> it's not even from hunting so much because I've hunted less this year than I have did last year but um it was just like back to back to back of just goose egg hunts and just nothing going right and one of these days we're gonna do a podcast and we're actually gonna be positive because <laughs> the past like four has been like it's been rough yeah <laughs> and anybody who's listening to this in southeastern north carolina they're just like man i feel vibe. your pain we're you know? killing the vibe for people killing birds right now but no like um we and tried to hunt some divers again which i've Tried twice this year. The first year, or first year, the first time out was my first time in a layout boat, which was cool, just to get to experience that. We shot a few buffalo head. It was all right. The the bluebills or nothing weren't really in there. And then now the bluebills have finally arrived, and like they are they are thick, and um, but they're just so rafted up, we couldn't do nothing with them. And basically, thank God I had a camera. Cause at least I got something out of that day, got some cool pictures out of it, but, um, the hunting side of it, not so good. And I've talked to a few guys that's been hunting up there and it's kind of the same story all around. There's 20,000 of them in a big raft and they're pretty much just screw you guys. (laughs) We're just going to hang out. I'm going to try to go up that way this weekend, but yeah, uh, summer outside. So yeah, decided not to really. It's a no Drive good. that far. It's a no good. It's a no good for a fat man. <laughs> so I guess we're just going to stick to the woody hole. But at least you got to go hunting. Yeah. Yeah. And we finally got a good a good goose hunt the other day, um, which I hate you missed. But Shocker. <laughs> had you been there, you'd have been as worried as me because got up that morning and couldn't see 10 foot in front of you for the fog i Mm. mean bad and i was like oh god like as soon as i walked out the door here we go i'm about to hook up this trailer and drive an hour and a half for nothing (laughs) like i just (laughs) knew it i just i was just i was already like pissed off about it Mm. um and for some reason out of all the times i've hunted in the fog for finally one time in my life the fog really played to our advantage for once so that was it was actually cool um which there weren't even that many birds it was it was a pond that we were hunting and um there had only been like 60 hanging out there and like right at shooting light i mean i bet it wasn't i bet it wasn't 10 minutes after shooting light you could hear some geese coming obviously you can't see them Mm mm-hmm and they weren't like super vocal I, i thought it was probably like a 10 pack or something like that and we're like all right, they're coming from this way somewhere, and you know everybody. And then finally, they cut the fog, and it's like fifty of them. And we're like, "Oh crap, that's a bunch of them!" And uh, we really messed up that fir- first group because they, when they were centered up, they were a little far out. Um, and then they ended up sliding hard on our left and went. And basically, long story short, only the left side of the blind got to shoot. They only killed. I think they killed like four out of them. Um, and I was like, crap, I was thinking that was all of them. I was like, dang it. They all got up at once. It's over. (laughs) And, you know, me and Parker's like, great. You know, we just, we just knew that was it. Cause we were already kind of doubting the day because of the fog and 
there'd only been like 60 in it. I mean, there might've been 60 in that group. I don't know. There was a bunch. Um, but we we're like, crap, they all came at once. Yada, yada. And, um, and then after that, it was like that slow trickle. Like you want, like every 30 minutes we'd have a group. And then it would be like, you'd get another group, you'd pick up, you'd sit back in the blind. And like, as soon as you started getting bored again, another group. Like, it was just, like, Keep that perfect, going. just slow trigger. And it was just, like, after that, it was just smaller stuff, like, you know, seven pack, and then a pair, and then a single, and then a ten pack. Like, it was just primo. Was it as good as the our last day of the season, like, two years ago in the sod? Uh, the the rain and the hunt? The rain and hunt, yeah. It was just five groups of five coming in, perfect. It was just like that. Dang. Um, except for they weren't finishing as pretty as that. Mm. But – as far as just the slow trickle, big spaced out, like perfect like that. Then we had two mallards randomly show up, which was super excited about. W- tried to work them. They circled us, I bet, 10 times and then landed on the other side of the pond. <laughs> that was depressing. <laughs> Todd tried to belly crawl over there and, <laughs> and get to him. That didn't work. That um, didn't work. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, we had three ringnecks that, randomly buzzed over top of us we killed two out of them three we weren't even in the blind we're just like oh shoot there they are bow, bow, bow. like as they're like passing over and killed two out of them three that was cool did um, the fog stay or did it lift up no, the sun it stayed oh. oh yeah we hunted till i think 11 and fog yeah Golly. yeah well that's what you get when the weather goes from 20 degrees to 80 degrees <laughs> but it was cool it was it was a nice relief to finally get to shoot some geese, finally get a decent hunt because it's just been bad hunt after bad hunt. So <laughs> it was very, very much needed um, to where it set my spirits a little higher than they were. <laughs> so it gave me just that little bit of bump to say, hey, man, you just got a month left. Keep going. I need one of them bumps. Yeah. So hopefully that's going to come in Oklahoma. I'm gonna, we're going to get you a bump before Oklahoma. Are we? That's still two weeks away. We got we got some stuff coming down the pipe. We'll see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Some secret stuff. Some some uh, secret stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. We'll get, it'll fill me in. But, yeah, what's um, – um, well, no, it's just a couple – we're going to go to your spot Saturday, and we're going to bang the mess out of them there. Um, that's going to be good. And then, um, didn't we already do one called Optimistic? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, as long as Toad's spot keeps holding for next week, that one's going to be a banger. Hopefully, hopefully, we might end up even filming that one if it stays looking like it's looking right now. Um, and then, uh, I haven't filmed a waterfowl hunt since last year. It's been a while. It's bad. And then, um, couple other spots i got a feeling it'll turn on that will hopefully turn on before the season's over well the good news is is i went ahead and took the extra like well day before we leave for oklahoma because we're off for a holiday that monday so i went ahead and took tuesday so i do got a day to midweek go shoot some stuff so you're off monday and tuesday um yeah i'm i i'm working i'm on call wednesday yeah so you're off that whole week yeah I'm going to call that weekend before. Of course you are. <laughs> Story of my life. But uh, I went ahead and took the Tuesday off, so I'm off Monday through the till we get back. So oh, good. At least Monday and Tuesday we can go bang them up somewhere maybe. We're going to. It might just be me and you, but. We're going to. We're, we're going to we'll do, we'll do something. something. Do something. But. What's um. To to the fog thing. What's what's your opinion on hunting the fog? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> As it never. Well, I had I didn't get the hunt you just did, but yeah, every experience I've ever had, it's ruined it. Yeah, so that's what it seems like. Because even that that what, was it two years ago that that rainy day hunt. That weren't foggy. It was just no, it wasn't foggy. It, it was, was just like a light drizzle rain coming on, and it was it was a lot of overcast, but it weren't foggy. No, but um. I think back to fog. I think about when we killed our bands, hearing the echo of them things coming, yeah, and hoping they're coming at you, and then they slide, and you don't even know they slid, mm-hmm. or when they finally break through, they're way over there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I like 
So, obviously, I, I don't think anybody will tell you that they prefer to hunt in the fog because I feel like more times than not, it kind of messes you up. But if you're forced to do it, like, what's um, what, what's um, what do you look for? What what kind of tips do you have if you're going to hunt in the fog? What like what's the first things that pop in your mind? Like, if you're aside from to the do obvious it? of being where they want to be at in the fog, yeah. which is hard to scout out because the day before it was sunshine and they went to where they wanted to be at. Yeah. Uh. Well, I think like. So, so to me, like the first thing that comes to mind is visibility. Visibility, being out in the open, being heavy spread, being as visible as possible. I think to the extent I think you of, almost have to turn up your your calling a little bit too, because a lot of times they're flying by listening, yeah. not so much by seeing. I think like that day when we killed our uh, our bands. I think like something like that. I know. I think we took a small group and put them up on top of this hill mm-hmm. but i feel like we should have widened the spread as far as going out and widened it yeah just so when something did break through that fog they would see us because there's a lot of birds i think that never even saw us right they just kept on trucking. well that was the problem there because it it kind of rolled off a yeah. hill and we were more down that hill and where they were coming from i don't think they could see us at all and that was the whole point of putting some of them up on top on of that hill. hill just for that visibility sake but yeah, it's, you know, I think... I could see the calling thing. I could see cranking the calling up to where you're literally guiding them to you. Right. And blind. Yeah, I mean, that would... I, I guess, not that I've done it a whole bunch, but just... that. I guess that's just, like, the two things that stick out of my mind. Like, if you're forced to hunt in the fog, I would say if you don't have to, don't. <laughs> but sometimes you have to. Um I, I would just keep those things in mind. Like, how can you get a little more creative to be as much, be as visible as possible? And then, two, maybe be a little aggr- more aggressive than normal on your call. I really, hope for the best. I really hope. But you know what's crazy is so, like, that goose hunt that we just went on this past Monday, that was the earliest we've shot birds this entire season. Well, they got up early in the fog. Yeah, which is crazy because I was like, you know, talking to the guys, I was like, it's going to be one or two things. It can only go one or five <laughs> ways. You know? uh, but I was like, they're either going to fly in the fog and hopefully they come here or they're going to wait till the fog lifts and they Absolutely. might. And I was kind of thinking they're probably going to fly late. Mm. And um, it was like 10 minutes after shooting light, already got the first group. Like, it was crazy. Like, they just – we don't care. We coming through. <laughs> but the only thing that made me feel a little bit better about it is Saturday when he found the birds there, it was super foggy that day. And so we knew, well, they went there that day, mm-hmm. and it was really foggy. So that was like that little bitty slice of hope that I was just <laughs> hanging on to saying, well, well it they did it on Saturday. Maybe they'll do it again. But um, I didn't know y'all were hunting water. I thought y'all were hunting a field. No, we were hunting a pond. Hmm. The uh, I think that the the calling would help bring them in. But and this is and this is Monday morning quarterback. And I mean, you know, when we're out there, we're sitting there trying to ponder like, what can we do to make this yeah. work? And then you, know, you look back on what worked and what didn't. And I think that not only calling a lot, but like I said, just I mean, maybe putting birds outside of the comfort zone of where you want to shoot at just to get like not a bunch of them, but you know, a small family group over here, way over there just to kind of funnel them to you, man. Yeah. But I mean, this is theory is just, well, the thing is, is it's, it makes it tough on a visual standpoint because like I said, you couldn't see them until they were maybe 60 yards. Did they fly before the sun came up or? Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if like the sun hitting that fog just makes it ten times harder to see through. I don't know, but it was put it this way: you couldn't see them until they were locked up, mm. and it's like they must they got to be able to see better than us because I don't know how in the heck they could see where they were. Like, how do they even know the pond was there? <laughs> I guess but, if you're uh, in the fog, you can see better. I don't know. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, it was. Um, that's why. So what I was saying is like visually, I feel like it's. It's hard to figure out kind of what what you should do. It's easy to say be more visible, but if you're dealing with a flat space, how do you be more visible? I mean, put your full bodies on a pole or something. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> but um, no dread poles. Because, like I said, like <laughs> you couldn't see them until they were there, and so it's either. I, I think a lot of it's just hoping and praying that they remember where it's at. <laughs> well, no, we we talked about like the whole scouting, like we stressed about scouting in the fog because we did a lot of that early season where it was like a lot you, of scouting. You the go fog. scout in the fog, and they do something completely different. And the next day, when it's bright and sunny, they don't even go that direction. Right. It's like they have their fog spots and they have their. Clear well, I feel like spots. a lot of times when it's in the fog, they have a tendency of. Get somewhere quick. Going get down. a shorter distance. Like, whatever's the first good place we can get to, that's where we're going to go. Yeah. And then on a sunny day, they might go for six miles. Who knows? You know? Yeah. And maybe, I mean, you think about the whole, uh, they live there, we don't. I mean, you could fog up my house right now. I could still probably guide around and get to where I need to go. That's true. So, maybe they kind of know where they want to be at. And I think they use, like... I think they use count. It's thirty seven flaps to that pond. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they use like landmarks like cell phone towers and water towers and stuff like that that really stand up. Just because like we noticed a lot where they they'll fly a lot of the same flight path a lot. And you can only think that they use like certain landmarks to make them do that exact same flight path a lot. Or I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking into it way too much, but <laughs> Sounds good. I ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> As you know, it's just the never-ending struggle of trying to figure out oh, yeah. why birds do what birds There's do. There's a reason they're called wild animals. Yeah. But, nah, it's... I really hope and pray for everyone who, if anybody still listens to this, that uh, next season we're going to be a lot more positive because I feel like we've had a lot of... Here we are, back again. It's been a roller coaster. It's been year. rough. It's been a roller coaster it's, it's, year. It's definitely been... I guess you can't always have good, you know, banger seasons every year. You can't always go out and just fill Instagram full of stack picks. Sometimes it's grind, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. So Yeah. I mean, I can't be mad about some of the hunts we've had. We've definitely had some solid hunts. It's just it's been a lot of bad for that each one good. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh ain't nothing came easy this year. That's that uh This better not be a reflection of how our turkey season's gonna go either. No, nah, no. Nah. Because you have a little bit more patience when it comes to goose. About a week of turkey hunting going like this, you'd be done quit. Nah, man, come you, on. You'd be you're mad. always doubting me. Because <laughs> I've seen you get pretty mad at a bird. Birds suck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about fishing. See, you know, and that's why part of me feels like I should deer hunt. Because the expectations aren't high on deer hunting. <laughs> not you're, here. You're going just planning on not shooting nothing. <laughs> no, you're not. So it's if you go it's, and sit if in the you stand, go sit in a stand and you don't kill nothing, it's not that's a, just it's, a day of deer hunting. It's not a letdown completely. I mean, it is, but it's not like it's expected. If you went out every time you sat in a deer stand and you killed a monster buck, which some people do, kudos to you. But if you did, it wouldn't be the chase of trying to get the excitement wouldn't be there as much. But that's what I'm saying. Like. like you don't go expecting to shoot one. You're like, hopefully we do, but if we don't. Ain't a big deal. <laughs> now you get to the end of the season and you still ain't shot one. Then you might start, but it's you don't. I don't you you want to shoot one, but you it's not a less super letdown one. If not, you don't shoot one, you're not like man, that was a horrible hunt. Well, one like, one, one thing just, that helps with that normal deer. Hunt. I think one thing that helps with that is trail cameras. Yeah, think about all the goose scouting you do. If you could just go put a camera up on a property you know geese are at, and just use that camera cell camera from work. And say, oh, geese, let's go hunt them. That'd be nice. <laughs> right? Kind of like deer. Deer, you go put a camera up, whatever. I mean, some people do You hunt, you know, public land or whatever. Or you people run dogs, whatever different kind of hunting it is. But for the most part, around here at least, it's you have bait piles. You put cameras on them when deer show up that you want to go kill. You go and try to hunt that deer in that area. It, it ain't like that with geese. Geese is hours and gas and everything else <laughs> riding around you put all this work into it you plan it you get up early as crap in the morning way earlier than deer hunting because deer hunting you're just going to walk in there and get in the stand that's what i'm saying i should just do it i feel like i will be less mad put it all together but it's I'm a patience game it's a patience game you can't tell me that this <laughs> goose hunting ain't no patience <laughs> game no, that's true too the uh you should man i wish you would then I'm you wouldn't get sorry. mad at me come october <laughs> or november November's the real kicker. I don't think I could. I don't think I could do it. Just be a rut hunter. I don't think I could. 
turn off something to go do something else. No. I don't know. She got to multitask, man. What's new with you? What you doing? Working. Working? Not new. <laughs> Same That's thing true. as the last time you talked to me. No, um, no policeman shooting deer outside the house lately? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank God. Who was it? I was telling that story the other day. Speaking of police, man, though, I did have a someone. I will not put any names out there, but someone did decide to apply to be a policeman and had active warrants. Show it's up! Not show. Smart. <laughs> Don't show up at the police station if you got a warrants. buddy of yours. No, oh. I don't know the dude. Like you hang out with him all the time. No, I don't know who this is. He lives here. <laughs> it's your For anyone listening? No, this is. <laughs> But no, no, uh, no crazy story there. Not that I feel like discussing, anyways. I was trying to think if there was any good stories to tell you lately, but um, story. (laughs) I told you the good stories last uh, last episode about us getting stuck on a mountain and my father in law busting his back three times and Mm -hmm. sliding on ice. I don't think I got any other good stories. (laughs) No, no. I had a stomach bug yesterday. Oh God! It's been going getting around. Sick now. It's been going around. It's bad. I already been sick. I don't need to be sick again. I was still feeling rough this morning. I feel feeling a little bit better now. Start Lysol on that mic. Why you clean it in between every episode? <laughs> um. So, have you ran a questionnaire? Because we haven't done that in a while. Yet. Nah, I stopped doing it because nobody really answers. Nobody it. really answers it. Because I'm pretty sure we, our moms are the only ones that listen to this show. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom can't figure out how to answer the questionnaire, so. Well, dang. Um, Miss Chapel, you need to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The I, numbers um, have gone down. Of what? Everything. I feel like our podcast numbers have gone down a little bit. Our YouTube's gone down a little bit. And I don't know if it's because it's coming to the end of the season or because we depress people with our stories of how bad the season's been right now. Maybe. Um, but no, I mean, and I and I, I feel like we added the video, and I thought well, that was Well, download good. numbers are way up, the what? but maybe not per episode, but overall the download numbers have, like, Gone up. more than doubled. Well, I like, I want to be interactive. But I think a lot of that's just because we're putting out so much more, too, so it's giving people a lot more to listen to. Yeah. I, I, I think the camera aspect added a little bit of interactive and people here to actually kind of get to know how dumb we are. But <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how else to reach out and try to make it to where people want to listen to this stuff, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Wish there was like Maybe. A, like, wish there was a way to do this live so you can actually have people call in like, this is what you need to talk about right now. <laughs> WQR Radio. <laughs> caller radio number voice. seven. What you got? Start giving away Bojangles meals or something. <laughs> Another W E A K week broadcast. Did you make that up off the top of your head? Is that no. actually radio? <laughs> no, I, I heard it on something a long time ago. It's I just called radio. It. Probably heard it on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> heard it somewhere. I heard it somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. You know, it's it's January. It's hot. Birds are stale or just the lack thereof the birds that we do have aren't moving too much it's a it's a tough time we're just counting down the days to going out west to get away from from here to maybe change (laughs) our luck a little bit and um trying to stay positive trying to you just want to let's just rent a place out there and stay there next year from like september to january that'd be easier well you know even talking with brett and cody it's been tough with them he i mean I was talking to Brett the other day, and or was it Cody? I don't even remember which one. But they were like, they really didn't start getting birds until December. Mm. He was like, it's it's been tough for them. It's been slow for them, too. And their December was really good. Um, but, you know, he was like, our early and first, like, regular season or whatever was, even they were struggling out there. Well, struggling for them. But slower, <laughs> slower than they normally do anyways. But I don't know. It's a, uh, it's, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's a good time for a, a break. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Odie Sporting LLC, the creators of the Trip Tick, the original bird hunters multi-tool. 
with features for both waterfowl and upland hunters. We encourage you to go check out the product at www.thetriptick.com and make sure to use promo code TEAM910 for 20% off your purchase. Speaking of trip tick, uh, they just got back from Cape Cod. Looks like they had a good yeah, time over there. That. Jake Darren, what was and them? his brother and Darren and Pops. No Pops. Looks like they had a good time. They they do that trip every year at New Year's, and it, it always looks like they have a blast up there. I can't wait to make that trek. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a good time. We need to figure out how we can get to the Pacific side. That's you go west. <laughs> well, I know how to get there. <laughs> we need to figure out how to go hunt that. When when can we go hunt that? I want to hunt that flyway just to say I've done it. I mean, you just go do it. Well, let's go. I mean, figure out how to do well, it. Let's go. <laughs> <You> just, <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> pump the brakes. We got some other stuff to do. Well, I'm just saying, one time we need to go hunt that flyway. If you could pick one trip, what would it be? For waterfowl. What's, what's your number one bucket list waterfowl trip? Well, okay. So there's two things that's been on my mind that I really want to do. One obvious harlequin. I want to go kill a harlequin. Before it's said and done, there's a there's a check box. That's there the number one thing you want to do? I just I want to check that box so bad. But so what last year killed a speck. Right? It was last year. My brain. No, it was last year. <laughs> yeah. I want I want to start like trying to hunt down species subspecies you know rare birds and say this is what i want this year i want to chase that bird down and like actually go literally like like i'd love to get a blue face i'd like to go literally put in that time and effort to say let's go find out where some blues are go kill one see i can't do it it's a lot of work i'll never do that no like i i think the 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 chase for the 41 or whatever you want to call it is awesome but I don't think that I could take a trip on going to kill one bird. Well, I mean, you you would kill multiple birds while you I know, were there. but like, but the whole point of the trip is, is to, to go chase get that this one. one. Like, I just to me that does nothing for me. Then you do not need a deer hunt because <laughs> that is all deer hunting is chasing one animal. And maybe that's why it's you. You would do that, and I wouldn't. I don't yeah. know. I just feel like it'd be a cool chase thing to do. It'd be something like I, that. It'd make a heck of a story storyline. Yeah. Um. It may take you several years to do it. Unless you just get lucky a few times, but I want to know what's what's your one hunt that you would line up right now if you could do it. Like my number one trip that I want to do is is either Canada or North Dakota. Well, yeah, we were supposed to do that last this year. Was it this? Year? Yeah, it was this. We year. were supposed to do it this year, and we ended up changing plans. But what you got? What next year? You get that extra week, right? Yeah, but next year will be. Hopefully the Cape Cod trip. Okay. Well. And then the next year it's gonna be one of them two. Okay. Have to decide. Yeah. I don't know which one. It's gonna be one of the two. I mean we gotta do it. But I, yeah. I talked to Ivan's, he said he had a blast, man. They said they looked, they had a good old time. Yeah, I know. I uh it's I can't you know, as many trips as we've taken, I can't believe we haven't actually ever taken one, but or like actually went up that far. I, I guess it's just the, for me, it's the vacation side of it is mm-hmm. being being able to take off for that long. But starting next year, that'll be a little bit easier. Well, that and I mean, I think we're when we go to North Dakota, we we're talking with the trip we had planned was a true freelance go do it, find it, do it yourself. Yeah. Versus like somewhere like Oklahoma, you know, Brett and all them that are there, they can scout, they can do things, they find things. Right going on a full whim you know spending thousands of dollars and thousands of miles and driving right. across to go whim it is a lot more stressful i guess than going somewhere you know somebody at oh absolutely like i wish i knew somebody that lived over in california I was like hey yeah we got some birds yeah. I want to come and somewhere. i think that's another thing that's so exciting about the cape cod one too because that one is truly like a freelance go and figure it out yourself yeah. like you know which i'm all for but you don't have the vacation time for i got what? For going and figuring out yourself a lot. Oh yeah, yeah no, yeah. I I'd mean, be all for it. Well, it's it's going to happen. You need start to, next year. See, it's not always my job in the way. <laughs> <laughs> you always put it on me, but uh, locally it's your job in the way. Locally it's my job, but travel side I, I do have vacation time. 
and I'd love to go move around. I'd love to expand a little bit and just hunt some different things, different opportunities. I know. Like, I want to I wanna do the Cape Cod for sure. I want to do Canada. I want to do North Dakota. I want to do Cranes in Texas. Yeah. I want to do a... I want to do a good spec hunt, whether that's Arkansas or Texas or Oklahoma or wherever. Anywhere. <laughs> um, One thing that sounds probably weirdly weird for people listening that do waterfowl hunt, you know, the average person's like, oh, I want to go to Canada. I want to go to North Dakota. I want to go to South Dakota. I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to go to Harlequins. You know it would be super sweet? I want to go kill geese in Wyoming. Well, funny, that would be you, the funny you say funniest, that. Funniest or the best pictures ever. It's funny you say that because the next thing I was about to say is I want to go shoot ditch mallards in Wyoming. Yes, I want to go hunt Wyoming. Have you seen those hunts where they kill, they hunt ditches that are literally like five foot wide? Uh -uh. Like the ditches are so skinny that the decoys are just in a line (laughs) and just smack mallards at like 10 yards. I'm down. Like I want to do that so bad. Let's do that. With a big snowy mountainscape in the background. I'm telling you, when I was in Wyoming and I saw some geese hit in the field, I, I was driving and I did not want to kill us, so I did not get a picture of it. <laughs> but I wanted to slam on brakes, jump out, grab a camera real quick because having like the Tetons in the background mm-hmm. with geese just lighting to a field. It'd be hard to beat. Yeah. I just want to do that for the camera purposes. Yeah. Okay. I'll kill them. You take pictures of it. Okay. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> In that setting, I think oh, yeah. redemption is a proof that, that one, I would be perfectly fine holding a camera. That uh, that one would be that would be tough. <laughs> She's like, "Oh man, that's so pretty, though." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, redemption is proof that I would be fine with that. How many birds y'all killed? None. We never <laughs> even shot. We just took pictures. Well, worth it. You need to go. You need to take that trip, even if it's not for a hunting trip. You need to go out there, man. That's that place is wild. I do want to go. It's worth it. I was a, uh, I may. Or I was trying to convince Jess of that the other day because we were talking about like every year, I want to go visit a new place, like family trip. Mm-hmm. Like every year, let's go see something that we have none of us has seen before. And so we were talking about like, well, what's places you would want to go see? And I had thrown that out there, and she was like, well, what would you do there? And I was like, you just go look at all the pretty stuff. So you just go there to look. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. She was like, nah. I was there for two <laughs> weeks, didn't get bored once. She's like, I just, I don't understand the go all the way across the country just to look outside. <laughs> I mean, does she not like scenic stuff? Like when y'all around here, like y'all go to the Blue Ridge or something, she don't care to like step out there and look at that view or anything? Nope. Oh, well, then you're screwed. We went to, I'll the, go with we you. went to the cabin <laughs> for Christmas and she never stepped outside. I'll go with you. Yeah. I was, uh, I may or may not have been looking at some, some flights out there <laughs> recently like i really want to go back i uh i mean there's there's other places i mean i want to go see the grand canyon stuff like that places i'd like to travel could you imagine trying to hunt around there i don't know can you put decoys at the bottom of the grand canyon <laughs> <laughs> i mean i know funnel them i've in. always heard that nevada is like a um a hidden gem for waterfowl hunting really mm-hmm I didn't had never heard that. <laughs> I've heard that. Never heard that. But yeah. It's just like one of them states you don't hear people talking about, but apparently it's it's pretty decent. Yeah. And well, I guess I, I guess the salt surrounding flats, states might salt be. Salt flats in Utah would be super cool. That'd be cool. We we actually saw salt flats for the first time in Oklahoma. We did? I guess it could be a salt. It's not really salt flats, it's just a I guess it was some kind, kind of, of like a salt flat. Like it was big. It looked like a big beach. It looked like an ocean, <laughs> but it was a salt. Yeah. First time I've ever seen something like that. But I don't know. Texas would be fun. Yeah. But see, there's a lot of animals out there that we've never even thought about hunting that people hunt that I'd that people have a fun time hunting that I would like to go do. Like a, I do want to go pheasant hunt at some point. Really? Pheasant hunt. I uh just because I want a, a nice pretty rooster mounted. I think that's like the prettiest bird. But, like, um, my father-in-law, he went to Texas deer hunting, and they get done deer hunting or whatever, and he goes and kills uh, javelinas. And I was like, that'd be cool. I mean, that's something you don't think. Hyenas. <laughs> Javelina. <laughs> they hyena. <laughs> nah, the, uh, I don't but like, even know what that's that is. Javelina. Ugly, ugly little creature, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it looked like something fun to hunt. 
Just like, I mean, like around here, <laughs> hog hunting, people hog hunt along. I've, I haven't done that. Yeah. You know, I don't know why we have them. I just haven't done it. So, that, I mean, not necessarily broadening the whole map of where we're hunting geese or ducks or deer. It'd be cool to just hunt something different. Go do some hunting. I was going to ask you that question, but I think I already know the answer to it. What's something you would want to hunt that you've never hunted? Take a guess. I'll see if you're right. Elk? Yep. With a bow. With a bow. With a bow. I want to bow hunt an elk. But that's... Yeah. That's expensive. I don't know what I would want to hunt that I've never hunted. I mean, it would be super cool to kill an elk. With a bow. That's the... You're killing an animal three times your size with a stick. I'm trying to think. Plus, I love the bugle. Maybe like hog hunting from a helicopter. That would be fun. <laughs> I went I went primitive. You went like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went redneck with too much money. <laughs> <laughs> redneck with too much money. Got a Gatlin gun strapped to the side of this thing. I don't know. There's... And you hear people like, especially like a taxidermist and stuff like that, especially like the guy that used to live down the road from me, he had people send him stuff from all over different states. So I got to see a lot of crazy cool animals like, all right, we know we know a guy that goes to Africa and hunts, you know? Right. Have you ever thought about doing that? Uh-oh. I don't, like, I don't know why, and he might hate me for this one, but like, that doesn't interest me. And maybe because I've never done it, right. maybe if I did, it would, um, maybe because it's not necessarily in the cards for me ever probably so that's probably why i don't even <laughs> like think don't about even it think about it because you know it's <laughs> not, not gonna happen but it's like if if you won the lottery would you go hunt africa yeah like it doesn't perk my interest at all but i know with talking with joey he's even said that like until you do it you don't really understand you it. don't understand yeah and i think a lot of him from the way that he explains it is a lot of it is like a rush factor knowing that you're hunting animals that can kill you. <laughs> like, you're hunting a duck. It ain't going to go south, and all of a sudden this <laughs> duck's going to kill you. <laughs> like, Man. you know, like, there's there's a whole difference in, I guess it, it like, levels the playing game when you're hunting something that would hunt you. Ain't you ain't the top of the food chain. No right, more. right. Yeah. And, and I could see that being, that would probably be the reason why it could be addictive in the fact of, that rush that you rush. probably get out of it but yeah no i mean i can't knock it because I, I try to i try to be pretty like unopinionated about stuff that i haven't ever tried Done, yeah uh, that's not down it i mean people do it, it looks cool i just I'm not, I, I think it's just because it's not in the cards really for me you know yeah, like don't even think about it because <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. gonna happen but it's just like one of those things if i if i struck gold hit the lottery tomorrow would i do it yeah and I, I just don't know. That I mean, way. maybe if if like money was money and time was no option, like no problem at all. Yeah, maybe at some point I'd be like, well, let's go give this a try. I've killed everything else, and I've killed everything in North America. I might as well try another country. But Man. so not saying it would never happen, but it would definitely wouldn't be at the top of the list. I don't think. But see, you got to take you a wild guy if you do a trip like that. Like yeah. somebody just he'll do anything. I got a buddy I work with. Man, he's. He's a big diver. He loves diving, and he's always trying to get us to go, like, get into diving, and I'm just like, nah, bro, there's sharks. <laughs> I ain't doing that. And But he's, like, all for it. Like, he'll be he'll be done, done under swimming with a shark or do whatever. He, he likes to spearfish. Yeah. That would be something I would love to do. Yeah. If you could take sharks out of the equation. <laughs> but uh, he's, like, big time into it. He loves spearfishing, and I, I think that'd be not only cool to do, but – if I could afford the casing to go film something like that would be sweet. Yeah. But I just, yeah. Yeah. I know a guy that's real big into like free diving spear fishing where they like literally like dive down a hundred foot, no oxygen, no nothing, spear fish, come back up, do it again. Like, and he's hit me up about filming it. And I'm like, aside from a GoPro, <laughs> I don't really have a GoPro way to and a long stick. Yeah. Like you could put it on your head and I'll sit up top. I'll film you go down and I'll film you when you pop back up. But I mean, I don't know, you know, but, that's crazy to me, people that do that kind of stuff. But that'd be something I would consider if I had the money and the time and the three people with spear guns waiting for the shark to come around. <laughs> yeah. Keep them off. I have my, my shark my bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm too I'm too buoyant for that. <laughs> That's what I tell you. <laughs> White the fat guy, no good, no good. 
But uh, what what if there was some other animal? Have you ever thought about that? Like get into another species? I know we can't really afford any more species, but have you ever thought about like changing to a new species or not changing, but like trying to hunt something different? We know you don't deer hunt. We know you I don't mean, fish. No, not really. Just turkey and waterfowl. Yep. Just plain Jane. Plain Jane. Well, that... I don't know. You you can't call <laughs> that plain Jane. Come on, man. Well, I'm just trying to... I'm trying to get the imagination side of you here. Yeah, no. I just... um. It's just a, it's just a, there's nothing else that really perks my interest. And some of it I've tried and some of it, it's fun. It's kind of like even like dove hunting. I don't mind going on a dove hunt, but I'm not going to get obsessed with dove hunting. Yeah. Or like quail hunting. I've been on a couple quail hunts. It was pretty fun. So why pheasant? Just because they look cool? Because I want to mount a pheasant. Like, and I really like, and that's another thing where like, watching dogs work like pointers and stuff like that mm-hmm. what you get to do that with quail and stuff and that part's cool i mean the time that i did it was with judd and cowboys so cowboy was in training so and he did point a couple birds and it was cool to see that um but the pheasant part is just mainly just because of the bird wow. itself i just think that they're like the prettiest bird there is or one of them anyways it'll just be cool to do but i don't think that i would ever be like big into upland hunting like it don't it's something that i would like to go on a good pheasant hunt but i don't see myself becoming like obsessed with upland hunting maybe i would i don't know (laughs) um the elk thing i think that would be sweet i just know white white fat guy (laughs) no good good. (laughs) you want me Uh, to do what up that mountain (laughs) yeah where's the four wheelers (laughs) you know um that, that's it's, that, that's got to happen. I want to do that. I've always wanted to do that. I think uh, aside from traveling for waterfowl, the next thing would be I would like to eventually do the the U.S. Turkey Slam. Yeah. I do want to do that. And that's something we've talked about doing. But and, it's just and like takes, the I vacation say, time, we don't have to do it. Right. And I say like that's the kind of thing like with waterfowl, I wouldn't travel for one bird, which for turkeys I would. But I don't know. Maybe I just look at that one a little different because it's like, I don't got to go get 41 of them. I got to get <laughs> you know, just a few of them, you know. Well, we we probably should. I mean, as much as we do turkey hunt here, you know, we, we've expanded our waterfowl across the states. It probably wouldn't be a terrible idea to try to maybe let's try to plan something out and go maybe go get Osceola or something, you know. I'd love to get a Rio. Yeah. <laughs> That time is a coming. We're coming up on season to be talking about doing that stuff. I so I wish we had. I wish I. I don't know any. Well, I don't have any real connections in Florida. That one's tough. Just your dealer. <laughs> that one's tough. You know what already discourages discourages me about going to killing Osceola is <clears throat> my cousin in Tennessee, who's like the biggest turkey fanatic that I know, who is just a turkey killing machine has made the trip down to Florida, I think, three the last three years in a row to try to get an Osceola, just hunting public, you know, and three years in a row, and he goes for like a week at a time, and he hasn't killed one yet. Dang. And I'm like, if he can't do it, I might as well not even waste my time trying <laughs> to do it. Like, because, like, he's the turkey whisperer. I like, out of everybody I know, he's the man when it comes to turkeys, but – I think it's tough. Well, maybe that'll make it all worth it when he finally does it, though. Oh, I mean, for sure. So, I mean, I, I would like to do it. It that's one of those things, though. Like, I think my number one would be I want to go kill a Miriam in the snow. That would be sweet. I think killing anything in the snow. Yeah, but like you could hunt anything in the snow, and it makes it better. But just that that Miriam's turkey because they got them white tips and ended in the snow. Like, yeah. oh my goodness, yeah. like. You're not going to find a prettier turkey hunt. Think than about that. any hunt you could go on. Add snow; it makes it better. Any uh-huh. any hunt, not only for picture's sake because of the you know exposure aspects, but just it makes every hunt better. I think the only time around here now I've people hunted, that hunt in the snow a lot would might not say that, but but I we think, don't get it, so it's yeah. it's a, a rarity to us. But like I remember a, a long time ago at uh, the property over by your house. Me and my dad went in there, and it had snowed, and we went in there and squirrel hunted in it. 
and me and my dad, me and old Richard Ramsey walking around. I had the brake <laughs> action and everything, and we're sitting there hunting squirrels in the snow, and it was just it was a good time. Yeah. I don't even think we killed that many, but it was just because it's you're snow, doing it in the we're snow. We're doing it in the snow. It, it makes it better. Yeah. So, no, absolutely. Snow fixes for everything. us. Yeah. Well, it's like when we went, me and G two ran up to New York for the weekend, and we got like a dusting on one of our hunts. Like we were like a kid in a candy <laughs> store, like freaking out, and they're like. Man, y'all guys really never do see snow, do you? <laughs> For those of you listening, it is January, and it is 70 degrees outside. That's why we're excited about snow. Exactly. So. Think we're going to get snow this year? No. No? No. I think we will. No. Nah. I think we're at least going to get a dusting. Mm. Yeah. If we do, it'll happen more in Oklahoma. No, nope, ain't going to happen there. <laughs> ain't going to be cold enough there. No, I'm saying, like, if it snowed here, we would be out of town or something. Oh, yeah. But I don't think it's going to snow this year. Just like the one weekend that we actually had a real winter, I wasn't here. They said that we were going to have a cold winter this year. They just didn't say they that it was be one going day. to be four days, <laughs> and, and it was over. Well, and then right back to heat. I'm I'm, I'm curious, too, because you can look at like the podcast and see where people listen and stuff and all the states and different things. And, I mean, there's a lot of people here, but there's a lot of people all over the world that listen to it, and it's like, People are probably somewhere right now with like eight foot snow outside, can't get to their car, or like, they ain't got no power, and they're over there. These, these guys, guys are don't griping. know how good they got it made. I'd yeah. kill for 80 degrees. <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. You kill some mosquitoes. 80 degrees going to kill me. Yeah, you're going to kill some mosquitoes. State bird. <laughs> the Wathodactyls. The Wathodactyls. <laughs> Wathodactyls. Yeah. But yeah. It's supposed to be cool. God, I can't talk today. It's supposed to be cooling back off. You need one of them uh, Monster Energy Coffee. That's why I can't mocha, talk. Yoko, whatever. I, didn't, I didn't bring my Loco Moco. Loco Moco. <laughs> whatever it was you were drinking. Yeah. You get wired before you do one of these. Wired. But yeah, I don't think it's going to snow. I think it's going to get cooler. It's supposed to start, what, tonight, tomorrow? some point start the night cooling down dip some. back down a little bit better and then each night it's going to drop a little bit but more. still i think it was like high 50 60s yeah i don't think it was like cold yeah but i mean i think we're at least going to get back to our 30s at night back to where i can wear a hoodie outside which i don't care what it's like in the middle of the day i just want to know what the mornings are going to be like <laughs> i don't care if it gets 100 degrees at lunchtime as long as it's going to be 30 at sunrise uh-uh. whatever i don't want it to be 100 ever no, I mean I don't either, but I'm just saying That's by the middle the of the, by the middle of the day I'm working on the computer. So, <laughs> it's whatever. I'm only outside the first few hours. <laughs> the coldest points of the day. When it gets hot, go in pretty much. Cuz go back and watch some of the trailer build videos. Dude, we were sweating our butts off. Especially cuz you, you I think well, I don't know when we started. I don't remember what month it was when we actually started the first one. But by, like, the third episode of building that trailer, like, every <laughs> single episode started with a fan going, and it's, like, <laughs> dripping sweat. We're like, we're back at it again. <laughs> yeah, when, I guess that it was. It was throughout uh, the summer, but I think we started probably, like, right. June, s- somewhere in there, I think. Yeah, maybe even sooner, like, I'm since turkey sure. season was over. I feel like it was dead after turkey season, like, maybe May, we just jumped right in. But either way, I know by like the third, you said I, I went through and watched them again, and like by the second or third one, which just starts out with the fan going and just sweat and two fat guys. We're actually gonna have to do some maintenance this year. Uh, it's time for a little bit of maintenance. It's probably time for a hard cleaning. Yeah, but we're gonna have to do a few things this year. It's um some of the some of the floors peeling off and. Mm. The uh, touch ups. The bars in the roof are all rusting. They're rusting? Mm hmm. That's not good. So, yeah, we need to fix that. So, just a few things like that. Nothing major. We had a lot of good feedback from doing those videos. Yeah. And didn't I think a lot of pe- I didn't want to do them. I don't think sometimes you actually didn't want to do them. No. Nah. But it, we actually had. It's like, like I wanted to, but then when we got here to do it, I'm it like, so oh, hot. I don't feel like, like doing this. But I, it was actually like some of the best feedback I think we've ever gotten was yeah. from doing this. I feel like a lot of people really appreciated those. So. Which, I mean, that was, you know, I know we've said it a million times, but that was the whole reason and behind it was just the whole 
put when, something when, out there. When we were, you know, like trying to do something that somebody hasn't done yet because when we were trying to research, it just wasn't a lot of good information. Yeah. You know, sometimes I have people ask me questions on there about stuff and some stuff I know the answer to and some stuff I don't. And then I mean, I'm like, I need to ask Nate this so I can answer them and then I forget. Maybe we'll go through it and I'll let you answer <laughs> Start some writing of this ones, down. There's probably a few that um that I've already forgotten about, which I know I have because I haven't talked to you about. <laughs> I'll try to get those lists to you, and then you're gonna be like, "Why do you expect me to remember?" You know, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's up? I don't know. Are we done. Yeah, we're we're just kind of mumbling on. Sorry, Phil, fellas. Sorry, people. <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, we're we're at the end. We're of just kind of in here. the middle of that lull right now. There's just not there's not a whole lot going on. Like we're in between that. Haven't really got to hunt a lot. I haven't hunted hardly at all. And then we got a trip coming up too that I'm just really just ready for it to be here. getting ready for that. And. Um, if you haven't went and watched our packing for a hunting trip video, prime time. Maybe we need to watch that so we can uh, <laughs> remember what we said. <laughs> remember what we said. Well, it's been fun. It's been real. <laughs> Tasty jams. Yeah, I feel like I could just sleep. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll talk to you on the next one. <laughs> I hear you go.